Welcome back to the part 2 of our journey in configuring Laravel WebSockets with API Authentication and Laravel Echo. If you haven't watched the part 1 of the series already, you might want to since this is the continuation of the previous part. So in the previous video, we set up a Laravel project with Sanctum and in this video, we'll set up Laravel WebSockets. In the terminal of our project directory, I'll quickly install Laravel WebSockets with Composer. They have an easy to follow along documentation for this package at the Beyond Code website. I'll quickly publish the migration file shift with the package with the command as shown in the screen and run the migration. Along with the migration files, I'll also publish the configuration files as well. If we open the project folder, we'll find the migration files in the database migrations directory and the configuration files in the config directory as websockets.php. Now, following the guide of the package, we'll need to install Pusher PHP server. So, doing that with Composer. To set up WebSockets, we'll need to configure a few things. In the .env file, we'll need to define few configuration parameters which will be used in the WebSockets config file like the pusher app ID, app name, app key, app secret and such. So let's do that in the .env. In .env, first we'll need to change broadcast driver from file to pusher before any of the WebSockets related config. We'll set app ID to anything right now, let's say local, app key to secret, app secret to again secret and, and cluster to empty one. Now not all of the config like cluster are necessary but we'll keep them anyway. That's all for the .env. In broadcasting.php, we'll replace few lines with the ones from the documentation's getting started page. Replacing options in the pusher array where we just add a host, port, any schema and remove use TLS. Now, in the app.php, we'll uncomment the line in providers array where it says broadcast service provider. Now, I can test if my configurations are valid. I'll navigate to the project directory and start the project. And in a Chrome tab, navigate to the web UI of the socket server at slash laravel dash websockets. Now 
Now, a socket server shall run on a different port than Laravel's port 8000 and defined earlier is port 6001. To start the socket server, we'll again go to the project directory on a different terminal tab and start the socket server with PSP partition WebSockets colon serve. Now if we click connect in the Laravel project page, we'll see a whole lot of things happening in the terminal as well as the page. For debug purpose, we can create an event from the UI, see all the clients subscribe to the channels and much more. But we'll not do the debugging things right now, but implement the events and such. I'll use artisan to create an event named chat and we'll see the events directory is created and a file name chat.psp inside. Class chat must implement should broadcast and there's a whole lot of things to do here, but we'll cover the basics only for now. I'll create a public property payload which by the name is our payload for the event. And we'll return a new private channel as app.user.3 Now the number here should be dynamic not a constant which basically means it must come from somewhere in real life but for purpose of this video we have simply created a private channel app.user.3 where others can subscribe to later. And this is really important as this event will ultimately link the channels.php like here. In channels.php you can control the permission for the clients to subscribe by implementing some checks to return either true or false and for now I'll always return true here. In the api.php, I'll enable the broadcast authentication routes with a single line copied and pasted, which enforces the use of Sanctum for API authentication as middleware, which is the core takeaways of the lesson. This video is not to teach how to control access to the private channels in your app, but to teach how to authorize a user with the Sanctum generated API token to even access the broadcasting routes from the front end. Once this is completed, you can easily check a user's properties like is admin, is verified, is friend of other user and sorts to access the private channels. Now to test the theory, we'll serve our app and socket server and use Tinker. For us to see what's really happening, I'll lay my terminal above the web UI and fire our chat event from Tinker.
immediately we can see a broadcast in the channel private app user 2 of of type api message so we're doing great till now no errors in the next and final part we'll be creating a vue.js app and consume our apis from the front end so stay tuned because the next video will be really very interesting thank you so much guys for watching this video till the end make sure to be subscribed to the channel if you like what we do here and if you have any queries please let us know down below in the comments thank you so much i'll catch you guys in the next one